Okay, great. Um, all right, so I have um, this slide up right now that gives you the link to the Substrate node template that we'll be using to build uh, a our own blockchain. So if you want to follow along um, in this workshop, uh, please go to GitHub and clone that now. Cool. Um, is there a better way I can share a couple links with you guys? Should I put them in the chat? Okay, so um, do, do we have do we have some people uh, clone that down? Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so um, so I'll just uh, jump into a couple slides really quick to explain what we're going to be building, um, and then we'll just jump straight into the code. Uh, so this is a workshop that will show you how you can build and upgrade. Uh, your own blockchain uh, by demonstrating the proof of existence uh, blockchain. So we'll be building a proof of existence runtime and proof of existence is a service that verifies the existence of a particular file and gives it a specific timestamp. So this can be used for something like copyright So if someone has a, uh, a doc that they want to copyright, they can upload it to the blockchain and, uh, and have a timestamp for when they uploaded that document. And then anyone in the future can retrieve that document, check the blockchain for a hash, and see when that document was registered. Um, so essentially, we only need two functions uh, to implement this logic. Uh, we'll have two, the, these are these are the transaction types. So we'll have two transaction types. We'll have the ability for an account to create a claim. And we'll have, we'll have the ability for the account to revoke that claim. So if someone wants to copyright a document, they can create the claim to that document. And if someone later wants to revoke their own claim, they they can call that call the revoke claim function to do that. Okay, so we're gonna just jump straight into some code. So let me share my uh, terminal. Okay, so the kind of the first step that uh, we did was we cloned the substrate node template. Um, so I'm inside of the, the substrate node template uh, repository in my code editor. So I'll quickly just walk you through what's in, in here. So we have some dot files. We have the dot dev container. Uh, this contains uh, a Docker file, which lets you set up the dev chain. Uh, we have some GitHub configurations, and we have some stuff for VS Code. This isn't. This is kind of just uh, extra stuff that comes with it. Um, now, the 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 core of the stuff that's in here. Um, so we have the Node folder. So this contains all of this, the implementation of the Node of your chain. So this is the command line um, commands that you give it. This is the chain spec. Uh, this is where you implement the RPC. Uh, we have the pallets folder. Uh, this is what contains our individual modules that we'll implement. It comes with a, a template module, which walks you through a few of the um, walks you through essentially the framework. 
Uh, we have the runtime um, folder, which is where we actually implement the runtime. So we, we implement the types that we have in our block. We define what these generic types that we've been using uh, actually con concretely are. And um, yeah, and then further down here, we construct that runtime with another macro and we implement each of the individual modules. Uh, scripts contain stuff that uh, essentially allows you to update your Rust version or run the Docker container. Um, target is where the comp compiled files live. And uh, yeah, Cargo, Cargo Toml is a the Rust con uh, configuration. It's similar to package.json for node projects. And yeah, we have a readme and, and the license is um, completely open source, free to use. It's the unlicensed. So there's there's no copyright copy left or anything on here. All right, so what we'll be doing is we'll be writing our proof of existence uh, palette inside of the, the template. So inside of palettes template, SRC uh, lib. So this this is basically all boilerplate for now. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this. Okay, so I mentioned before there's kind of five major pieces of a module: the imports, the configuration, storage. Events. Errors and the callable functions. So imports will just be using kind of some standard stuff. Uh, we'll import the Mac macros that we'll be using module, module, storage, echo event, echo error, and dispatch. OK. Inside of our configuration, this is where we um, this is where we put our uh, configuration traits. So it's um, as I mentioned before, it's essentially the place where you define uh, your custom types on your chain. So we inherit from the substrate system a trait, which gives us access to uh, the basic types like block number and so on. Um, but for this, we'll just implement uh, an additional type for the events. In storage, we'll use the decal storage uh, macro. We'll define and implement the store trait. So inside of the storage, uh, we'll need a field to store the proofs, the um, the hashes that people will be uploading to the chain. So for that, we're going to create a map. And when we define a map, we also define what kind of hasher that map is using, because under the covers, 
a map is a hash map. So it uses hashes as the keys um, to find values in that in that hash map. So we'll use the Blake two hasher. Oops. And we'll say that a vec. So a vec is similar to an array, but it's growable. So it's a an array with uh, no limit on the size that it can hold. So we'll be saying a a vec of u8s, which are um, unsigned uh, integers. Uh, that can contain uh, a byte. So this is essentially an array of bytes. So we can say an array of but an array of bytes will map to a tuple that gives us the account ID and the block number for who for who registered this document. So we use a generic account ID type to identify as a particular account. And we use the generic block number type to identify a, a block number. And because we use this spec, we also need one more import. Use SP standard backtrack. Okay. So next we want to uh, define the events. Again, we'll be using the, the macro, backlow events. So essentially what, oh, I should say pub. So essentially what we're doing here is we're, um, we're defining this generic type account ID as the account ID that we get from the substrate system. So we'll have two events. We'll have an event when a claim is created and it'll tell us who created that claim. And what that claim is. Uh, we'll also have a claim revoke event. Which tells us who revoked that claim what claim it was. Um, for the for this we'll use the decal error. And we'll define a few errors that our runtime will give us. So we'll have one for if a proof is someone tries to access a proof, um, or someone tries to register a proof that already has been registered, we say that that proof already exists, and you can't register it. Uh, we have one if there's no such proof that someone tries to register, and then we have one if uh, someone tries to revoke a proof, but they're not the owner. Okay, so next we'll, we'll actually implement the logic of the chain. And we do that inside of the deco module block.
this first line is basically just boilerplate. We're just um, we're just kind of this is what you do in every substrate runtime module is you have to create the module struct and define the origin. Um, And then we'll also just put a couple of defaults uh, instantiations. Okay, so the first function we're going to implement is the function to create a claim. When we define functions, we also have to say uh, how much these functions will cost. In substrate, this is done using an attribute called the weight attribute. And we define how much that function weighs. And from there, we can calculate how much it'll cost when someone calls this function. So there's different ways to define the weight. You can do it based on dynamic values. Uh, but here, we'll just use a static value of 10,000. So the first thing we'll want to do inside of the create claim uh, function is we want to see who is calling this function, who is calling this transaction, where does this transaction originate? So in other words, who is the sender of the transaction? Um, in order to do that, we'll use the uh, function that we imported up here from the system. We'll use ensure uh, sign. And we'll, we'll call that over the origin. So this will essentially um, check that this, the, the calling party, so the person making this transaction is an account and not another module or something different like that. And then it'll give us back the account ID. So the account of the person who's sending this transaction. Then we'll use the ensure uh, macro to check if the proof that they're trying to, to uh, claim is not registered. So we'll, do, we'll, we'll access the proofs storage. And we do that like this, uh, proofs over this generic type. Um, and then we'll call the contains key. And since the proof itself, the proof hash is the key, uh, we ask if, if the storage contains this proof already. And if it does, we'll return an error that proof already exists. And then uh, the ensure is imported from, uh, from there. Okay, so next, um, after this, after this is checked out and we are sure that the proof isn't already registered, the next step is to save this proof in storage. And uh, if we go back up here and look, the two things we're saving inside of this tuple is the owner of the claim and the block number that that claim was registered. So that means we'll need to get the block number. So in order to do that, we'll call into the, the system uh, palette or the system module. That exposes a block number function. So this will give us back the block number that this transaction is being executed in. And now um, what we do is we save that proof. So proofs is a, the proof as a key and a tuple of the sender and the block number as the value.
And then since we, we have these uh, events defined above, we'll emit the claim created event as the final thing that this module does. So for that, we'll, we'll use this deposit event function that we defined up there. And we access events by using this raw event enum. We'll access claim created. Go to the sender and the birth. So this is this is the entire create claim function. Yeah. 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 Yep. Sounds good. Yep. Did you guys get this? Okay. All right. So, um, so I'll go on then to the second function function that will be calling. Um, so if you remember from the slides, I said we need two transaction types. We need the ability to create the claim, and we also need the ability to revoke the claim. So revoke claim also takes the origin and the proof that's being revoked. And we'll just give it the same weight of, of 10,000. Okay, so for this, we'll start the same way we started the other function. We want to see who is sending this transaction. So again, we use the ensure sign function on the origin and that'll give us back the account that's sending the transaction. From there, we want to check if this, uh, this, this proof, this claim actually exists. So we'll use contains key again. And this time, instead of checking the, the negation of it, we want to check that it actually does exist. And if it doesn't exist, we return the error that no such proof exists. So now that we know that it exists, we can get the tuple, the owner, and uh, the block number, which we don't care about. So um, in Rust, if there's a, a variable that we don't care about, uh, but we need to explicitly mention that it's part of the tuple, we can just define it as the underscore. So that's what's... That's what the underscore is doing. So we access the proofs storage and we get the proof that's associated with this proof key. Uh, and that gives us back the owner and the block number. Now we want to make sure that the owner uh, is the person who is sending this transaction. So we check equality that sender is equal to owner. And if, if they're not, 
will commit an error that says not proof owner. Um, so now that we've checked that the proof exists, that the, the person sending is the owner, what we can do is we can uh, just remove that proof from storage. Because uh, this transaction is valid and it wants to revoke the proof. So we just simply remove it from the storage. And again, we'll we'll create an event for claim revoked. That way, anyone who's watching the chain can see uh, who revoked the claim and what claim that was, the, the proof of the claim. And that's that's the entire revoke claim function. So now what we have is we have the essentially the entire runtime uh, that, that we wanted to do for uh, we wanted to be able to register hashes of documents uh, with a timestamp. So this is all the logic that we need. Um, so the next step would be then to uh, in the runtime folder. In SRC lib, we have to make sure there's two things before the chain uh, can run with this. Uh, one, we have to make sure we're importing the palette. Um, so since we since we use the template, it actually just uh, imports the template by default. Uh, so. We have to make sure. So if, if we had like if we had called this um, proof of existence, for instance, we would we would need to make sure we imported it in this way. But we just left it as as, as template, so it's here already. So we have to make sure that's here, and then we have to uh, configure the template for the runtime. And for that, uh, we, we put a block that looks like this. And we, we implement template for runtime. And we define the generic, event, the generic types as concrete types. So because our template only had the event, uh, we, we only have the, this one field here. But if we look at some of the other ones, uh, we can see that for, for instance, the balances uh, palette, which handles the account balances, so essentially implements a currency. Uh, for that, uh, it needs to define the existential deposit, uh, which is defined as 500 up here. So, this, so if you had if you had more uh, parameters for your runtime, this is how you would set that those parameters. Um, but for us, we only had the event, so don't really need to worry too much about that. And then the final thing you have to do when you make a new palette is you have to make sure you include that palette uh, in the construct runtime block. And that's already done for us here. It defines the template module as the template that we created and gives us the ability to call that, call the transactions, the storage, the events, and so on. So when that's all done, uh, the next step would be to compile this, which I, will, I won't actually compile this right now because um, there's, there's a lot of uh, dependencies kind of under the cover. So this will take this will take at least half an hour, I think. Um, so I, I already have this compiled. So when it compiles, it'll give you a, 
a binary called the node template. And I'll be calling this the node template binary. So this is your command line interface to your chain. So this is this is uh, what you see when you run the help command. Um, yeah, essentially this is uh, yeah this is how you run a node. So we'll just go ahead and get that started. And we'll pass the dev flag um, because we just want a development chain. So we'll see some output saying that uh, the, the highest known block is zero because this is a new chain. And then it'll just start chugging along and creating blocks. So we see here block one was created, block two created, block three created. Um, now that's cool, but what? how do we actually call transactions on this chain? So for that, we'll be using We'll be using the uh, apps dashboard. Okay. So for this, we'll make sure that we're on the local, we're on the local node, and we're not on one of the live networks. So yeah, it looks like we're checked on that. So we're. So this is our local node, we see block 12. Let's check down here. Yep, block 12, block 13. That looks like it's our chain. Um, and then the next step would be then to send a transaction and, uh, and see if it works. So for that, we can go into the developer tab and click extrinsics. So, Extrinsics are the generic uh, term for a transaction type. Uh, when you run a development chain, you have a few pre-funded accounts. You have Alice, Bob, Charlie, and probably the rest of the cast of characters that you know from, from computer science. Um, so we'll just be sending a transaction from Alice to our, to our module which we call the template module. We just left it as the template. Um, we can see this populates for us already the two transactions that we've defined, create claim and revoke claim. So we'll create a claim um, for just zero one. Our proof will just be zero one. In reality, this would be a hash, um, but since this is just a demonstration, we'll just use zero one. And we submit that transaction. This will ask us if, we, if we're sure we want to confirm. We can see the details in here. We're sending zero one for the proof. Sign and submit. And once the next block is authored, we'll see that this create claim function is in, in the block. And it'll also say that uh, the events that we had defined claim created uh, was also sent up. Um, so now that that's created, let's double check that that, that worked. Um, and we can do that by going to the developer tab again and clicking chain state. So it's inside of chain state, you can read the storage of the chain. So again, we'll find the our template module and we have the storage that we define proofs. So we'll pass in zero one, and we'll see that there's a value. There's uh, this. So this is the the address of Alice's account, and this is the block that Alice submitted that proof. So it worked. That's good. And if we check another proof, zero one zero two, for instance, we'll see that gives us. Uh, so this is just the default account. This is different from Alice, and it gives us zero because no one has registered that yet. 
So if we want to um, revoke this claim, if we want to revoke zero one, um, we should be able to do that and then see this result, the, the empty result after we do that. So let's go back to the extrinsics tab. We make sure that we're sending from Alice because if someone else like Bob, for instance, sends, uh, it should give us an error. Let's just, let's just check that really quick. So, so this is when someone who doesn't own the claim tries to revoke that claim. So Bob doesn't own the claim zero or not? And no, it doesn't. We see that the transaction was included, but that it didn't work. It failed, and it says why it failed, and it said the error that we gave it, which was not proof owner. All right, let's make this transaction actually work by using Alice now. So we'll sign that by Alice. And we'll see that worked. We have the claim revoked event and also the extrinsic success event. And we check the chain state. And now it gives us an empty result. Okay. So any questions? Yeah. Okay. So it might take a while to compile. Um, what, so yeah, so we can do that. Um, I can also, I can also demo the upgrade as well, but we only have 15 minutes, so. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so then I'll I'll show the code again. Um, and if anyone has any questions, just let me know. Mm hmm Yep. So, yeah, tomorrow should be a little bit easier. Okay. Um... Uh, so what problem do they have?
Uh, sorry, share, share which part? Uh, it says what is not defined? Uh, okay, I think I know why. Because um, so it's saying SP standard is not defined. Okay, I think I, so I, I do think I missed that part. So in the template, we don't have SP standard yet. So we actually do need to import that here. Um, so essentially what we can do is we can uh, copy one of these dependencies because it's the same GitHub repository and replace this by SP standard. And we have to make sure we put SP standard uh, down here as well. Uh, I think this is, uh, okay, so I think we, yeah, the, we need to also put the, the two parentheses on deposit events as well. So this should fix that error survey.
Uh, okay. So, um, okay. So there's a couple things you'll need to do. Um, so in, in the palettes template folder, um, there's a cargo.toml. In the cargo.toml, we'll need to put in the SP standard dependency. So what I did there, copied this frame to one and just change this to uh, dependencies.sp-std. Uh, so you, you put that up there and you also put it um, down here in the same file uh, in the features portion. Uh, you have to enter the sp-std uh, slash std, like this. Okay, and then the next one is the insure, which is um, in the in the lib.rs. Uh, we we import that from frame support. So it's the last import is insured. That was a, a late addition as well. Oh, so I think you're missing an S on line 53, yeah. Um, can you go to your cargo.toml? Okay. Did you put the sp.std in the bottom as well? In the under the features? Okay, you did. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Hmm. Can you go? Can you go back to the error really quick? Uh, the the compilation error. Huh, it's a, mm. So that usually is because of cargo.toml uh, misconfiguration. Um, yeah, let's check this SP standard. Let's see. Um, here, I'll, I'll paste my cargo.com in for you. Oh. Uh, yeah, once, once it, so it looks like there's a, it, some kind of misconfiguration in the cargo.tom, but I'm not seeing what it is. Because um, usually you get that compilation error when uh, you're when you're bringing in the standard library, um, and this is usually because of uh, something is is leaking in the dependencies. Uh, so, I mean, it does look all right. Uh, let me check mine really quick. So you have codec standard, SP standard, uh, frame support standard, and frame system standard down there. Codec, yeah, you do. Um, let's try this. Um, I'll I'll upload my uh, cargo.com as a as a gist really quick and then try to see if um, mine works for you. Were you able to get it working with my cargo tomo? Sounds good. Yeah, if, if anyone has any problems, I'll answer them tomorrow. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.